So it turns out, and this is average for many different materials. So this is not true for every material, but many materials have these different regions of the stress strain diagram that are pretty interesting, have interesting properties. So right at the beginning, when you first start to stress a material, there's a linear region, uh, a linear relationship between the stress and the strain uh, diagram. And so we're gonna call this region the elastic region. All right, we're gonna call this the elastic region. That's the linear region where a little bit more stress gives a little bit more strain. A little bit more stress gives a little bit more strain. And the slope of the elastic region is E. So let's maybe come down to our next page and just talk about the elastic region. The slope of the elastic region is E. E is the modulus of elasticity or Young's modulus. All right, so we can call it the modulus of elasticity or Young's modulus. Y'all know what modulus, the word modulus means? It means a measure. So it's a measure of an object's elasticity. Okay. The steeper, what would a steeper or a larger E mean, right? If we had a very steep curve right here, then it doesn't strain very much. So the larger your E, then it doesn't stretch as much as one with a, a lower modulus of elasticity. Okay? So that's the elastic region. Um, let's talk about some points. Let's talk about some points. So this right here uh, would be the uh, sigma PL is the proportional limit. All right. This is the exact point where it stops being linear. Right? Stops. So that's the end of the linear. region uh, but very close to it and many times the proportional limit and this next point are just the same points because they're basically the same this is the yield stress all right and if we want a definition for yield stress this is the point at which the material begins to deform permanently. Point at which the material begins to deform permanently. Permanently. So Y'all can write that maybe. E-N-T-L-Y. Uh, but many times we're gonna group those two. We, we probably won't even deal with a proportional limit. We're just gonna give you the yield stress. What is the yield stress? This is the stress at the end of this is the end of the elastic region all right the end of the elastic region where it begins to deform you permanently now let's talk about that the de deform permanently okay when we're in the elastic region if, if we give a little bit stress to that black dot if we let go of the stress it goes back down to zero and there's no strain when there's no stress you know our axes are stress and strain uh, so there's no strain when there's no stress and so if we load it up to here to this point if we unloaded it it would go back all right if we loaded it here and unloaded it would go back to zero if we loaded it here and unloaded it would go back to zero but once we get past the elastic region do you know what happens if you unload it 
it unloads at a slope of E. And so if I loaded it up to here, past the yield stress, when I let go, and when you let go, there's no more strain. So I'm going all the way down. It would end right here at this pink dot. What does that pink dot mean? That pink dot means there's zero stress anymore, but it, it has some deformation. So it, it begins to permanently deform outside of this elastic region. That's why it's called the elastic region, right? That's why it's called the elastic region. All right, so let's, let's kind of write that down. We're still in the elastic region. I need a better way of um, organizing this. The material behaves elastically. Maybe this is redundant. Material behaves elastically in the elastic region. Elastically in the elastic region. Okay, I might kind of give an overview of these next few and give you a handout uh, next class. But those are some interesting things about the elastic region. Okay, the elastic region is that beginning portion when you're just starting to stress the material and it's linear, uh, it has a slope of E, uh, and it bounces back to its original shape when it's in the elastic region. Doesn't that kind of make sense, right? You can, you can stretch some things and then they go back to its original shape. But if you stretch something, you get to a point where if you stretch it too much, it bounces back some, but it is deformed permanently. All right, so the next region is the yielding region. This one right here is the yielding, Y-I-E-L-D-I-N-G, right, yielding region. So you can see that this region, you actually don't need to add more stress. You get to a point where your material just start. even if you keep, keep pulling it with how you're pulling it, the material starts to stretch, okay? So it's kind of interesting. And, and again, every, every um, material is different, but there, there's, there's usually a, a point where you go from a, a nice steep slope to a much smaller show, slope, right at that yield point, it changes. And if you keep on increasing, it really starts stretching, right? Yielding region, it really starts stretching. And we, we can call this, maybe let's call this elastic and this plastic, um, plastic behavior. It's not really plastics, but behavior elastic behavior elastic it bounces back from it but plastic it starts to stretch and it's not going to go back to its original shape okay in every region on this plot it unloads if we remove the stress it always unloads at a slope of e so if we were, if we stretched it, you know, to over here, it would unload at a slope of E and it would end up right th down there at that blue dot when no stress, but still some strain. So it is permanently strained down here at that dot right there. This is not to scale, not to scale. Generally, maybe write this down, the yielding region is usually 10 to 20 times wider than the elastic region. Yielding region is 10 to 20 times wider than the elastic region. If we were really to draw most of these diagrams, it, it would look like this. You know, it, we wouldn't be able to see the elastic region because it's so thin and so small compared to the yielding region. So this is 10 to 40, 10 to 40 times wider. Uh, 
than the elastic region. All right, so that's the yielding region when it really starts to stretch. This right here is a strain hardening. Strain. Let me write it down here. Strain hardening. So in the yielding region, it really starts to stretch. But then it reaches a point where it, it, it almost hardens. It, it, it can withstand a higher stress. So it's like you start to stretch and it's really stretching good for you. Then you go to a point where it gets harder and you've got to give it a, a higher stresses if you want to keep on stretching it. So that's the strain hardening uh, region. And then this is the necking. Sorry. This is the necking region. Okay. The necking region is where it's, it's beginning to find, get very, very small. And you, 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 you can start to tell where it's about to break, right? You can start to tell where it's about to break. So let me write a little bit necking. Here's kind of a technical de definition, cross-sectional area. begins to de decrease in a specific spot, in a localized spot. And so you, you can start and watch the video. You can really start to tell, oh, it, it's about to break right here. You can, it's, it's, you know, it's really, you know, if I'm pulling this way and this way, then the necking region is where it really starts to decrease in localized spot. Okay. A few things. This one right here is the ultimate stress. That is the maximum stress anywhere on your stress strain diagram. The ultimate stress, sigma u. This is the fracture stress. This is a stress that it fractures. So at some point, it gets to a point where it breaks. And then that's, that's the end of your stress strain diagram. So you can't get, have any more stress. So right there, it fractures. That's a fracture stress. Okay, this line up here, this line right here is the true... This is the true uh, curve, the true stress strain curve. That would be the line you would get if you kept on remeasuring the cross sectional area of your specimen. Okay. But we, as engineers, don't want to keep on remeasuring. We're just going to, we're just going to stick with taking the force and dividing it by our original area. So this is the engineering curve. This is the engineering stress strain curve where we just assume that it keeps its original cross-sectional area instead of, because imagine this, you know, if you have a force and I have the same force, if I keep remeasuring my cross-sectional area and my cross-sectional area is decreasing, the stress curve, you know, is lar higher, larger than my, um, my engineering curve. Okay, now, in all of my other classes, dynamics, statics, mechanics, or, or uh, thermo, any other classes I teach, I actually don't give a lot of, definitions you know i just i just test you on problems four problems on the test this class and you can look at my old test this class i do want you to know the areas the definitions of of the stress strain curve all right so study this this is probably ugly you can probably find a better maybe i'll find a better uh stress strain diagram look at your book 
uh, and understand and study the different areas of the stress strain uh, diagram. Okay. 